start with pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kathy, would you open prayer? There are so many in need, Lord, we ask that you lay your merciful hand upon them. We ask for guidance and wisdom. And Lord, we, we just pray that our decisions are your will and the better for the better in this county. We ask all of us in my heavenly precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And welcome to our May 19th meeting. Um, as you can see, Commissioner Davis is not here. I have no fear he is still working for the people of Sida County. He is in Columbus testifying on uh, House Bill 523. And part of that legislation has to do with um, giving some authority back to the Adams Age Board. So it's authority they used to have as they're looking at some of these treatment centers. That authority was taken from them. Um, so that is what he is working on today. So we appreciate his effort on that. And in the meantime, Kathy, we will hold down for it. <laughs> so with that, um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of May 12th? I want to apologize for my voice. I got a little bit of a scratchy throat this morning, so I have a little frog. I will make the motion to approve the minutes of May 12th, 2022. And I will vacate the chair to second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. And the matter of resolution submitting the application to the Board of Building Standards requesting certification of a building department in Scioto County, Ohio to enforce the rules of the Board of Building Standards. So this is the first step in um, starting back a building department in Scioto County. We had one in the past, um, it went away, um, a lot of that activity. Basically, you relied on the state, you know, if you're sending plans or whatever to the state. And, uh, you know, we had some constituents who had a construction project in, um, even in Willersburg. I spoke to a gentleman last week where that process is slower than in situations where counties have their own building departments. Uh, so this moves us back into having our own building department. The last thing we want to do is hold up progress and, quite honestly, cost um, people that are doing projects money as they're waiting around for their plans to be approved. So. Um, this is the first step in that. There's other standards that go along with it, but this is the uh, request to uh, submit the application. Can I, any comments, questions? No, sir, and I will make a motion to adopt the resolution. I'll second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter, request for appropriation of funds. Uh, any comments or questions on the appropriations? Hearing none. Motion to approve. I'll second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of accepting miscellaneous reports? Any comments or questions on the miscellaneous reports? Hearing none. Motion to accept. I'll second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of request for fund transfers? Uh, any comments or questions on our fund transfers? Hearing none. Motion to approve. I'll second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. In the matter of request from the Scioto County Sheriff to enter into a contract with Horizon for high-speed internet service? Uh, this was an item that we discussed last week that was in front of us. Uh, Commissioner Davis had a valid question saying, um, hey, Horizon is out of telepathy. Is there anybody local that can provide this service after checking with the Sheriff's Office and his IT uh, professional and reaching out to some of the local um, providers, be it Memphis or otherwise, um, they actually don't run um, high-speed internet to this part of Portsmouth. So uh, they were unable to meet the needs of the sheriff's office, which takes us back to um, the Horizon bid, which would be $1,100 a month, which was, I believe, $300 less than um, Spectrum. Any comments or questions? Hearing none. Motion to approve. I will second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. And a matter of communication from the Department of Job and Family Services regarding cost allocation plan correction? Uh, any comments or questions on the cost allocation plan correction? Hearing none. Motion to approve. 
I'll second it. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Powell? Aye. And the matter of proposal for architect services for proposed renovations to office space located at 502 Court Street for the OSU Extension Office? Um, we've been looking at this space, and Treva Williams is here with the Extension Office. Uh, we've been looking at this space, uh, seeing what we could utilize it for. This is the old, I want to say, Oddfellows. Odd I always want to say Goodfellows, I know that's right. Yeah. Uh, Oddfellows building um, it is right next door to our. Uh, Economic Development Department. Um, we own that building. The county owns that building, and there's an opportunity to expand services um, through the extension office. Um, Treva, if you would, um, if you want to come up to the podium and kind of discuss what this would mean for um, OSU Extension. Angie, can you turn the uh, camera on to uh, Treva, please? Well, thank you for allowing me to come talk to you about this. Um, this is really would be. A, a huge asset for our office if we could get this space um, with the renovations. Currently we have in our office 11 people. We are very, very cramped with space um, and just last week we received notification that we actually will be able to hire an additional employee Congratulations. <laughs> with, um, through, federal, through grant funding. So again, at no cost to the county and that will be a three year position. So um, that will be a position working with youth. But in this space particularly, the thing that really excites us about this is that it will give us the opportunity to do some programming that we really have been restricted with in the past because of lack of a meeting space to be able to do programs. So when we have to go out and do a program, we have to search to find a space. Um, we will be able to have groups up to about 30 into in this space as it has been worked with the um, architect setting up that part um, by it also having a kitchen facility this will tremendously increase our ability to do programming particularly in the areas of food and nutrition and so some of those areas that we would be increasing our programming first would be in food preservation so right now we know people are really scrambling with the whole idea of food security and so uh, food preservation is one of those, those areas that I get a lot of questions on. Um, every, almost every week I'm getting calls, even now. So we would be able to actually do demonstrations. We would be able to have people do hands-on classes where they would learn as they were, um, as we were teaching, they would actually be implementing the practices that we were working with. The other thing we have is a program called Cooking Matters. Cooking Matters is a uh, six-week program that we do with based with our nutrition program assistance and again we've only been able to do that in limited facilities because we didn't have space with a kitchen that we could actually do those programs so that those are a couple things um, we also do a lot of food safety training Dennis and I train a lot of people in Scioto County on food safety manager and food safety person in charge training which is required by the Ohio Department of Health for anyone who is serving food to the public. And so this would again give us a venue to be able to teach that here closer to the office without us again having to go out to find space to do those classes. Um, we also have a program called Dining with Diabetes, again, a food nutrition program based on that health concern of diabetes and helping people learn to eat more healthy. We've done limited versions of this, again, because of space. Um, but in addition to the family consumer science side of things, we have opportunities to increase some of our 4-H, what we call special interest clubs or spin clubs, which are very short-term projects, very short-term programs. We could actually have a facility to bring people in. So if they wanted to do a, a class on photography or they wanted to do a class on cake decorating or whatever it might be, we would have that facility right there that they could do that. We also have our car teens program that we do in partnership with Juvenile Court. Right now we have to go to New Boston um, to do that class because that's the only facility we have that we can get into in the evenings consistently year round. Um, we also will have master gardener classes that we're hoping to get started here this fall. That will be a perfect opportunity again to be able to increase that program um, you know, our current, our current office space downstairs has a very small conference room. We can get about eight people, maybe ten sometimes, um, 
but that's very limited if you want to try to do any type of activity. So it would be, I think it would just be a huge asset, plus the fact that we all know meeting room space is at a premium, and that space would be obviously open to anyone to use. Um, we've already got a food demonstration table with a, a mirror purchased, so that was funded through a grant. Um, we have a, we have, we'll have high-speed internet with um, internet capabilities there with a flat screen monitor. So you can do Zoom and those kinds of things right there from that facility also. Well, very excited about the prospect, and, and thank you so much for serving the community. You guys do so much. It will be through 4-H and then all these food programs. Um, it's very exciting that you get your own space, and you don't have to worry about is the courthouse open or not. That, and that's been a real challenge for us, particularly even like when we have meetings yeah. um, with our 4-H committee meetings, because we need space that's handicap accessible and available in the evenings, because that's when people are available to meet. So. A, it will be a huge asset for us. Well, I'm, I'm excited about this project. Uh, I know today we're talking about the architectural services to renovate the space. Right. I mean, you've kind of already been through the space. Um, are, we, are we talking about locating, is it four staff? It'll actually be five. Five staff yeah. at that location plus the meeting space? Plus the meeting space, yes. Plus so, the kitchen, which is Plus critical. the kitchen, yes. Yeah. So there will be um, our four nutrition program assistants would be relocating as well as myself. Um, I will be moving over to that facility, which will then free up space in our current uh, unit for the, for the remainder of our staff. Um, because we do have the internet connection, like with our copier and things like that, we'll still be able to print from, e from that location to our office over here. So. Awesome. Yeah, I think this will be, uh, this project will be well welcomed by all the 4-H families oh, and yes. uh, the many people you serve. So thank you for coming over and sharing thank a little you. bit about what you guys do. And, and I know it's, you said it in a quick amount of time, but I know it fills a lot of gaps in our community. So thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions? I was just going to add that <clears throat> just by your presence in that building will open up many grants to uh, our The rest of it. Right. Yes. So that perhaps we can do more things to that building. Right, yes, because um, all of the, the nutrition program assistants are all fully federal funded. Um, they're on a federal grant that we have had here in Scioto County since 1994. So we have been very successful in maintaining that funding. Um, and then my position, in addition to having county commissioner support, also has a significant amount of state and federal funding attached to my position. So. It's a win-win. It is a win-win. <laughs> awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so what we are um, deciding here, uh, Commissioner Coleman, is the proposal for architectural services for the renovation of this space. And you've already heard everything that we can do with it. Um, it's located at 502 Court Street in the Odd Fellows Building uh, for the Site County Extension Office in the amount of $14,400. Any additional comments or questions? Yeah. All right, hearing none, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. I'll gladly second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. You got a lot of work ahead of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're excited. Very good. And you know, the Odd Fellows, um, I don't know if many people know that, but that is an organization for veterans of foreign wars. Mm. I don't know where the, the name came from. I'm sure it means something um, to their organization, but that's that's who used to be in there Very once good. upon a time. Very exciting. Um, on to item number nine. In the matter of Child Support Enforcement Agency 4D contract with Parker Courts. Uh, this is the contract between uh, Child Support Enforcement Agency and the Clerk of Courts. This is for Title 4D contract um, effective April 1st, uh, 22 through March 31st of 23. The amount of this contract is $129,936.94. Any comments or questions? Hearing none. Motion to approve. I'll second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. In the matter of approving payment of the regular schedule of accounts for the various funds, moral obligations, and then and now certificates in the total amount of $653,175.89. Any questions on the document? Hearing none. Motion to approve. 
I'll second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. In the matter of letter of support for Portsmouth Muir Incorporated grant funding application from Appalachian Regional Commission regarding Portsmouth Mural Preservation Project. Well, this is a letter of support for the uh, Portsmouth Murals Inc. Um, there is some funding through um, the Appalachian Regional Commission um, to help them um, with securing additional funding. Um, they actually just announced that they will be moving forward, and it's not connected to this grant, but they're moving forward with the Children's Home um, Mural. Are they? Uh, I saw uh, Rose shared that, so that's very exciting. I know she's been working very hard and some of the um, individuals that went through the local Children's Home. So I think that only leaves them about three panels left until the, the flood wall is completely covered. And it's the largest continuous piece of artwork, I believe, in the world. Um, so it's very much a treasure. We very much, you know, I very much want to see it maintained and continued. And I think um, what the murals board is looking to do is gain funds. Because um, one, it costs a lot of money to paint these, but two, it's even more money to um, keep them updated and preserved. Um, they, you know, with COVID, they got a little behind and we were able to help them out with $60,000 um, to kind of help catch them up. Um, but this is additional funding that they're trying to um, to get, and it's specific for tourism, which when people think of Portsmouth, the first thing they think of is the flood walls, um, and it, it is a tourist attraction for our area. Um, so, this, any additional comments or questions? Yeah. All right, hearing none, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Aye, we'll second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. And the matter requests for appropriation of transfer of funds. Any comments or questions on the transfers? Hearing none. Motion to approve. A second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. Sorry. In the matter of resolution regarding the expenditure of American Rescue Plan fiscal recovery funds regarding Friends of Green Lawn Cemetery Foundation. Uh, we, we received a request um, for funds through ARPA funds, um, which we can use to make up the difference in lost revenue for nonprofits or tourism. There, there's several different line items there. And the Friends of Greenland Cemetery, David Gamble, reached out and said, hey, it is their ability to help. Uh, I know they were hit hard. They weren't able to have their, their most major fundraiser, the This Is Us um, um, presentation they put on every year. And it's always sold out. It's always a big event. And of course, some sponsorships and then other things that have happened in the market with COVID. Um, has affected other other sponsors because they're trying to recover from their own um, situation. So, um, you know, some people might think, that, hey, it's just a cemetery. Um, the reality is, it is a tourist attraction. There are people that travel in town to to check out the the cemetery. There are events that happen there at the fully remodeled church, which is beautiful. If you haven't yes. seen it lately, yes. um, got to see it during their sunrise service on Easter. They always do great events. There are literally events happening there year-round. Weddings are happening in the cemetery now. Um, and of course, the This Is Us tour that they do. Um, so they are asking for $36,300 to help make up some of their, their funds that they lost over the two-year period due to COVID. Um, they are looking at using these funds to add additional markers, um, historical markers, explaining different parts of the of the cemetery and kind of making it easier to navigate and kind of highlighting, quite honestly, some of the historical significance within uh, the cemetery. Um, you know, they, they do a heck of a job. Um, they, they are able to mobilize people from all walks of life. When, I remember when they were painting the fence, mm -hmm. um, they did a heck of a job with that and, and they keep reinvesting in that, that asset. And then of course, you know, we have our, um, Veterans Circle there. Yes. It's um, so we also have the veterans part of the cemetery there, which is beautiful. And um, you know, I'd like to see if we can help them out and help them catch up. Um, Thirty-six thousand three hundred dollars. I know they will put it to good use. Any comments? I uh, know, but I have been there for the Memorial Day service, and it is beautiful. It's very moving. Yeah. And with that, I will make a motion to adopt. All right, and I will second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. And the matter of resolution regarding the expenditure of American Rescue Plan fiscal recovery funds regarding Friends of Scioto Brush Creek Incorporated. Uh, this is another ARPA request. Um, this is for the Friends of Scioto Brush Creek. 
um, and they are also working with the friends of um, Otley Park, um, and it, really the whole group's kind of tied into the Otley, Otley Historical Society too, with, with the Otley Covered Bridge, and they've requested some funding. Um, and you know what, when I think of that area out there, it's not just a park of what they've utilized with that space. Of course, you have the historical significance of the Covered Bridge, but uh, Friends of Brush Creek does a ton of conservation education. They have field trips out there. They have keep kids down in the streams. How do we preserve our waterways and our watershed? Um, they have the um, reptilian area, riparian area, I'm saying that wrong, um, where you can go look at the different plants. and. So they're doing a lot of different programming. So there's the educational piece to it. Of course, there's the Parks and Recs piece to it. And then also as we're building out our kayaking, canoeing industry, that's really the starting point. If you look at the, the waterway we're trying to build on this side of Brush Creek. Um, so it's also a tourism play to ensure that part of the county is um, beautified and there's different offerings there. Um, this request, they actually had a, a larger request and we're trying to be mindful of all the requests. So. Um, I, I would um, put forward to the board that we provide them with $100,000. Um, I know they'll put it to good use. They were looking at different park upgrades, walking paths, making the educational piece more ADA um, accessible mm -hmm. um, with some paved paths and um, some markers. And, um, you know, it's a great organization. They, they clean our watershed. They actually have a cleanup coming up. It's not this Saturday, but next. So if you want to get in a canoe and drag trash out of the side of Brush Creek, um, it, it's a great opportunity to get involved with them as well. But um, they do a lot for the community and a lot for conservation and education, which in this part of the state is critical because our natural resources are our greatest resource. Um, any comments or questions? No, sir. All right. Well, with that, can I get a motion? Motion to adopt. And I will second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. And the matter of subgrant agreement between the Board of Saudi County Commissioners and Friends of Saudi Brush Creek Incorporated regarding American Rescue Plan Act funding. Um, since we did approve the resolution to give them money, um, they do have to uphold to the same standards of the federal procurement uh, guidelines. Um, so we do have to also have a subgrant agreement with them to ensure compliance through our guidelines. Um, comments or questions? Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. All right, that's the end of our agenda. Are there any questions on agenda? Nothing on the agenda? Nothing on the agenda, but I do have something off the agenda. Okay, um, let's go to off agenda items. And if you'd use the microphone. Thank this you. This is from Colin Dockman. Yep. Off agenda, we heard from Adams last week indicating that tremendous need in our area. We are one of the few regions in our area without a level on the books for fundamental health services. What are the commissioners willing to do to help build in support of this need? I mean, at this point, we're having communications with the Adams board to see exactly what their needs are and what they think. Quite honestly, it could be passed because it is a measure that would have to go um, to the voters, not just in this county, but the other two counties. So it's a matter of starting conversations, Colin. I appreciate the email that you sent um, earlier uh, regarding the same topic. Any additional comments? We have one in house. Um, if you can get him a microphone, please. <coughs> State your name for the for the record. For the record. Good morning, my name is Thomas, Thomas Bailey. Hey, Thomas. I have two um, statements. Okay. First, going to be on 140 parking lot. This uh, afternoon, we're going to talk to a Sam Southern to give. Is that over Sam? Is the city over that? Yes, yes, it is. Really? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go speak to him. Great. And then number two, I have a question for Ms. Reba, is do the 4 a program do, uh, do summer activities for uh, youth that are in a uh, group home, whether it's like uh, training sessions or the importance of uh, youth service or uh, any other activities that may be going on this uh, summer? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're very uh, open here. Okay. So, as with all of our programs, that would have to be a request. Okay. Um, we don't just have anything just automatically set up. We partner with a lot of different groups to do programming as our staffing allows. So it would not be a, an everyday program, um, but you know, we could possibly potentially work out something depending on what the request is and the availability of our time. 4-H provides programming year-round. It is not just a summer program. And so that's, I think that's one of the points of clarification. A lot of times people think only about what they see during the summer, but 4-H goes on 365 days a year. And I would encourage foster families you know, yes. children, the children you're speaking about, they would be in a foster situation if they would like to get their um, you know, children involved. Definitely reach out to OSU Extension. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Very good. Thank you, sir. Andy, we are back to you. I have one more from Colin. Yep. It says, Commissioner Powell, do I correctly understand that you have been made president for our region in the Ohio One Settlement Proceedings. They had their first meeting. How did that go? So, Colin, I wasn't at the first meeting. Um, that was, so the first meeting, so there's a couple things here. Let me back up. So, uh, and we've had our meeting. Region 9 has had our meeting. Um, that's where they made me the president of that board, and that represents eight counties, 24 representatives. Um, representing multiple aspects of um, the, the public sector, essentially the organizations that sued the opioid companies. So you had representatives from the county, from the largest municipality, typically a city within those groups, and then uh, townships, because all those entities couldn't sue. Um, so I am the president of the local board, which we met in Ross County. Um, the first meeting for the statewide, which we did have a representative at, um, you know, our board chose to send a temporary representative while we research really what that involvement looks like. Um, she was from, and I'm going to probably say it wrong, I think she was CAO of Fayette County, maybe. Um, but she was there for the first meeting. Really what the first meeting at the One Ohio statewide is they're trying to set up um, and I wasn't at the meeting Colin, on, so I, I haven't seen the updates, but what they were trying to do is set up the nonprofit structure and what that looks like. There's still a lot of unknowns to the settlements and to the funding. Um, you know, it's one thing to say, hey, you're getting all this money, but then logistically, okay, what does that look like? And that's really what the state and the AG is trying to figure out. Um, the, the one Ohio board in Columbus that the main board really, my current understanding is they'll be a clearinghouse for projects that are coming from the different regions. So um, in theory, the, the local regions will come up with projects for whatever that bucket of money is for each um, local board, and then we'll submit to the statewide to ensure that it, um, and they'll review it to ensure that it still meets the, basically the settlement language and it fits into the requirements that is built into the settlement language. So um, I haven't heard of an update yet, Colin. When we hear that, I'm more than happy to share. Um, there's a lot of moving parts there. And uh, I know the AG's office is still trying to figure out some of that. And we're waiting on some additional guidance. Uh, the reason we had our Region 8 meeting the way we did um, was the main focus is make sure we had a representative in the room. Um, so, so we were able to do that, and then once we get more guidance in terms of bylaws and really how the structure of this kind of works throughout the state, um, we'll know more. Uh, the first red cent hasn't been paid out from the funds. They're there, the settlement's there, but until the statewide structure is in place and then the board structures are in place, we're, we're not going to see any money funneling into um, the different communities anytime soon. It's just the nature of them trying to figure out the logistics of this. It's a massive plan that affects every subdivision, quite honestly, in the state. So, uh, thanks for that question. Uh, I'll try to get some additional updates from our representative that was in the room, and I'll be able to share that. Anything else? Nothing else. All right. Um, any 
comments, Commissioner Coleman? Uh, no, I just am thankful to be here. I hope everyone enjoys their uh, weekend coming up and uh, be safe and be kind. There you go. Um, there's a couple events coming up this week. Um, the ones that I saw, I'm sure there's more that I missed. Mm -hmm. Forgive me in advance. Uh, Friends of Portsmouth is having a spring cleanup. That's a Saturday, uh, 9 a.m. That's for the downtown area. Uh, that's the area they're focusing on this time. Um, there's also a free graffiti festival that's put on by the Portsmouth Arts. Um, probably gonna mess up their name, but they're having the down at the free wall, but they're gonna have music and food and artists and some public displays. That's a two day event from the 21st to the 22nd. Uh, and then also we have a lot of uh, seniors that are stepping into the next phase of life. So congratulations to all of our seniors and we wish you the best, um, whether it be going into military or college or the trades, um, we wish you the best. So congratulations. Yes, there's, uh, there's so many um, young people graduating now. We, and and you, you're right, we do. It's a whole new chapter. It's the first chapter of their life basically on their own. So we wish them every happiness and, and success. Very good. With that, can I get a motion to adjourn? I will make the motion to adjourn. And, and I will second. Ms. Coleman. Two and two. Aye. Mr. Powell. Aye. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful weekend.